Hey everybody, it's the end of October here in northern Michigan, and today I want to talk specifically about shrubs you can trim right now and shrubs that you absolutely should not trim. So I want to start with that do not trim list first because that's the most important one because you could do some damage to your plant uh, and have poor performance next year if you trim the wrong plants. So in general, the ones that we don't trim now are any of the early bloomers. Now in our area, that usually means any plant that's done blooming by the 4th of July, that's usually an early bloomer. So I have a couple of them out here. I'm going to show them to you uh, and I'm going to show you exactly why. Now there are some that aren't necessarily bloomers at in the early season but we still don't trim them this time of year so I'll try to cover as many as I can. Remember I'm not an expert on this. You might get uh, different advice from different people as well so uh, there's a lot of different ways to approach this so there isn't one right answer uh, but there are some good advice or there is some good advice out there and I hope I can give you some of that today. So on these pallets, I have some of our no trim varieties. So here are some rhododendrons and azaleas. So these are really early flowering plants and you can look at them right now and you can see next year's flowers right there in the center. So we do not want to trim those off because we will not have any blooms next year. Uh, so that's the rhododendron. These are the azaleas. Now the rhododendrons, you might also, there's some bigger leaf ones out there. Those tend not to do as well in our northern climate. So we don't carry any of those, but these smaller leaf ones tend to hold up a little better and flower more. Uh, then over here, I have some mock orange. So mock orange is another one that blooms early. So we leave that one alone. We would, if we are gonna do any trimming on any of these, it's gonna be after they're done flowering. Now that said, I may decide to like cut off this this wayward branch here uh, in the fall just because I don't want it to grow you know so lopsided uh, that's up to you on that um, here are some nine bark I generally don't do any pruning on these because I like to keep that nice vase shape if you start trying to to trim it back it sometimes loses its shape and it does get some flowers um, but it'll usually still flowers even if we trim them but I usually avoid that because I want to keep its natural shape uh, it starts it just I don't always like how that looks uh, button bush is going to be another one uh, and we want to be able to get those nice little button uh, pods on there. Another one would be lilac. I don't think, I think this is a bloomering lilac. Uh, the reblooming ones you could trim now because they will get flowers next year. But if you want that nice big flush, uh, you're gonna wanna leave these. So you can see if you look at those uh, branches, you can see next year's buds and those are gonna you know, kind of burst forth. And the reblooming varieties as well as regular varieties have their best show in the you know, early season. So those are usually blooming uh, the first week in June. So if you want that, you've gotta make sure that you don't trim off those buds. We don't trim the smoke bushes as well. So we kind of keep away from any kind of trimming on those uh, except for shape. And then like this here, this nice red one over here, this is some viburnum. So this is viburnum, the common snowball bush. So this is the one with the really big white puff balls in the springtime. Uh, they sometimes are mistaken for hydrangeas. We want to look at those. You can see there's lots of uh, buds kind of in there. Uh, our flowers are going to come on those in the springtime. So if we cut these now, and that's the case with most of the viburnum, there's a lot of different types of viburnum. Uh, those are going to be, you know, definitely ones that you don't want to trim off because you want to enjoy those beautiful flowers in the springtime. So those are the main ones that we have. The other one would be like the Wajila. That's another one that in general, you, you don't have to do a lot of pruning on these, but like I have some that these are young plants that we grew that they got out of hand. We should have trimmed these earlier when they were even younger than this. So I'm gonna have to trim them back, but they're gonna get a nice new growth kind of inside and they'll be nice and bushy next year. So if you have one that's just, it looked really leggy like this, I would recommend giving it a nice good prune. We're gonna kind of use our rules that we use with hydrangeas, making sure that we have two leaf sets. So when I'm looking at leaf sets, that's those bulges where the leaves either used to be or are gonna be. So one there, one there, I'll probably cut it right around here or I could cut it back over here. And we always cut it just above those leaf sets. And that's gonna encourage growth towards the bottom. Meanwhile, some of these other varieties like the Vino Verde and a couple others, those are nice and full. I wouldn't necessarily have to trim those at all. It'd be just kind of your, your uh, preference on trimming those. Now, a couple other plants, like I generally don't trim the Gold Splash right now before winter. Um, I would just do that during the season. That one's pretty forgiving. Uh, but a lot of the other plants, like a lot of times, you want, might want to do some of your dogwoods, uh, but a lot of people like to just cut the sticks because they use the sticks for Christmas decorations. So if you do that, you're not going to have any problem with them doing that. So uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, I did bring up some of these other plants here 
that I am going to prune. So these are some of the most common ones that we see. So barberry, that's the one with the little picky pieces on it. This is potentella or potentella. And then this one here is one of the spireas. There's a lot of different types of spireas. And then I have another Wygela. And that one I am gonna trim back just cause I wanna tame it a little bit. And I wanna show you uh, a little detail on that one. So let me get started here. I'm gonna just use the hedger. You can use just regular bypass pruners. So this is, you know, for the average person who only has a couple shrubs, just use these. You can, you know, there's nothing you can do you can't do with these that you can do with the pruner. Um, and you're gonna be more precise and you probably do a nicer job. But if you don't have to, uh, or if you have a lot of shrubs, you're probably gonna to wanna to grab that, the, um, the uh, hedger. So I'm gonna get that running and I'll show you exactly what I do. So let me start with some hedging tips here. So generally, uh, I do wear gloves when I do this. I probably should be wearing eye protection. So I'm breaking that rule today, uh, but you probably should do it. So do as I tell you to, not as I do. And then, when I'm trimming, I try to kind of trim mainly with the front tip of the hedger. Uh, it just I, it may, means that I'm being more aware where that tip is. If you start doing here, you get a little reckless and you could maybe catch, like if you had a phone wire or some kind of cord or tags or something on another plant or someplace nearby, you're more likely to hook it if you're not paying attention to that tip. So I always kind of work with that tip. Uh, the other thing that I find is that working from the bottom of the plant up, I tend to get a nicer cut, a nicer shape and have more control. I find that if I'm constantly trying from the top, I'm hacking at the plant a little too much. So be really careful about that. Uh, so, you know, try it that way uh, for a couple times. And then sometimes you just do another pass the other way and you'll catch some of those uh, stray ones. The other thing is, is that your goal is not perfection. Your goal is kind of tidying it up or improving it or, you know, improving the shape and the growth for next year. If you're trying to create a topiary, a topiary uh, sorry, uh, this is not the time of year to do it. So uh, if you try to get the perfect sphere, just remember next year's growth is going to go way past what you've trimmed. And, you know, you're going to be putting all this effort in for this perfect shape. That's not your goal today. Your goal is to tidy it up, to benefit the plant for next season. Uh, it's not to make this perfect little sphere so that all your neighbors talk about how nice your barberries look or something like that. So let me now get in and show you uh, on these example plants exactly how I'm going to trim them. We'll start with this potentella. So I do wanna be careful, I have a tag in here. I'm not gonna be removing that. So I wanna make sure I'm always aware of where that is. I think for the moment, I'm gonna just shove it into the plant a little bit. So it's out of the way. Sorry, I'm, you probably won't have that problem at your house. So now I'm looking at the plant and I really do wanna just get it into a nice sphere. Now, I might be trimming off more than you would at home simply because we're gonna be keeping them in a pot for another season. So I want it to be more compact. Whereas at home, you might want something bigger, but you can see it's a little lopsided. It's growing heavier on this side than this side. So I'm just gonna even it out and I'm gonna to try to keep it as centered in the pot as possible. So uh, when I start, you're gonna see, I'm gonna start more from the bottom and work my way up. Uh, that works for me. It's not necessarily how everybody else does it. There aren't true wrong ways usually how to do it, but uh, there are better ways. So let me give it a go. So there we go, it's not too bad. Of course, it's a little tricky for me to do it here. So now I'm gonna go back through with my bypass pruners and kind of get anything extra that I just feel like I wasn't able to catch with the hedger. Now when you're hedging, a lot of times it is a good idea to put maybe a tarp or a sheet or something on the ground and kind of wrap it around that shrub so that way you can collect all the debris and it's easier to just kind of then take it into your compost uh, if you just let it fall on the ground, trying to rake it up, especially if you have mulch or anything like that, it can be kind of a challenge. So I would suggest that. So there, our potentilla is done. Now we're gonna move on to barberry. And again, barberry can be a little picky. So this one you really wanna have gloves for. I'm gonna hide that tag again. I'm gonna pull this one a little farther away because it was a little hard for me to trim so close up. And let's give it a go.
I think I'm gonna get a little more off right there. And that's as good as it's gonna get. Next year's growth is gonna make up for any kind of little oopses I might have in the mix. And do the same thing with this spirea. So you can see like there's a little bit of a bare spot here. That's gonna come out uh, next spring with new growth, so I'm not too worried about it. Overall, pretty good. I'm sure as you're looking at this, you might be seeing things like, oh, if I had some trimmers, I'd be uh, tidying that up even more, and that's fine. Uh, now here on this Wajila, now I remember I said Wajilas, we generally don't do those in the spring, but when I look at this one, I notice like there's a definitely a dead branch. Um, that just even just broke off. I definitely would trim off any of those because I really don't need those in there. They're just taking up space and I just don't want it to interfere with the growth of the plant. So let me get some of those out. And a lot of times if you look at some of these plants, I don't see it on this one, but you can see where it was trimmed in the past. So when you're in doubt, a lot of times you'll look for kind of those remnants and that'll give you an idea of what you're supposed to do. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and give this one just a little bit of a trim. Again, Wajilas, you don't generally do in the spring, but I'm gonna just trim this one back so it'll be tidier for next year. There we go. And one of the other reasons why we tend to tidy up all, all of our shrubs as well is because um, a lot of them, if they get too tall and they're in the nursery pots, they're gonna fall over or be prone to being knocked over. So I wanna make sure that I, they're gonna be healthier and safer next year. Now I've got another one, it's an aronia, that I'm gonna show you uh, some trimming that I'm gonna do after I've done the hedging. So let me get that one over here. So this one's already been cut back and I wanna look a little bit closer on the inside here. So when I look in here, you're gonna notice this one branch here. This crosses over and it's crossing over into these other branches. Now, it may not be a big deal right now, but as these uh, trunks get a little bit bigger, they're gonna really cause some problems. They might even push each other out uh, or crack. This is especially true on like some of the hydrangeas and things like that. So let me get in there. And just gonna trim that one off. Sorry, I didn't get a good enough grip on that. I don't think I have very sharp pruners again. There we go. So I cut that one off. I look for any of the other really horizontal growing ones. So if I wanted to, I could potentially uh, trim that one off because um, I do look for ones that maybe are growing towards the ground a little bit. So I'm gonna trim that one, but I don't necessarily have to. And there's one over here that's doing that same thing. So we're gonna get that one out of there just so that on this kind, unless it's a creeper, we really don't want it to be growing sideways. We want it to be growing upwards. So, and then I'm looking at this a little closer and I see like, yeah, this one just needs a little cleanup. And then again, when I'm doing the hedger, uh, we can kind of have these little rough edges. These plants are durable. They tend to be fine. So I don't worry about it too much, but uh, you know, just that's what that looks like. So here's a little grouping of my newly trimmed shrubs. They're gonna be much happier next season uh, because they're gonna be nice and tidy. That new growth has plenty of room in there and they're not gonna be uh, offset in the pots. They're gonna be the right proportions. Roses are another plant that I will be doing. Now I'm gonna save these because even though there's a lot of spent flowers on them and the leaves are kind of getting a little ratty, uh, there's still some beautiful flowers that I can enjoy. So I'm gonna kind of keep on these, uh, but I do kind of the same thing. I just kind of mound them. These are more of the carpet roses and the bush roses. They're not tea roses. Uh, so uh, these, I, I like to kind of keep them nice and tidy so that they stay in the pots and, and look good for next season. Uh, and these can take a good amount of pruning without doing any damage. Uh, some of the climbing roses, that's gonna be a little different story. Uh, this is the time of year when you do wanna give them a little bit of trim if you have to. Uh, you can also weave some of these canes into the uh, 
you know, whatever they're growing up against and also trim out some of the extras. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there. I'm not an expert on climbing roses, but I would say uh, this is a good time to do those. Now, if you have hydrangeas, there are two varieties that you're gonna trim now in the fall. So if you have panicle varieties, that's these right here behind me, those are the ones with the cone-shaped flowers that usually start out lime or white or uh, kind of a cream, and then often they'll blush to either a pink or a red or a mauve. Uh, those kind do get a pruning now, as well as the arborescents. And arborescents are like the Incredible, the Invincible, the Annabelle. Uh, they're all the ball-shaped flower ones, like the really, Kind of big ball ones uh, those kind they do get their trim and those are usually white or pink and uh, so those you hack right down but again i'm going to have a video specifically on hydrangeas so you know watch that video or watch the video i did last year because you'll know which ones you should do or not do if you have like macrophylla uh, corsifolia or serrata i think all those varieties you wait until and only trim off the dead flowers. So uh, macrophylla are the big leaf hydrangeas like the Endless Summers or the Can Do series like the Arebas. Uh, those you wait. So those are usually the ones that are pink or blue, although there are some white ones as well. Uh, and they can come in a couple other colors like kind of more of a raspberry red color as well. Uh, but those are those really big colorful uh, flower heads. Uh, those don't trim those now because uh, those have flower buds for next year. Same thing with your mountain hydrangeas and the oak leaf hydrangeas. Those I think you generally wait uh, and do those just as the flowers die or if you need to trim them for shape you could do that. Uh, so let's see are there any other ones I can think of specifically? I can't think of any other plants. I hope this advice helps you. Uh, good luck out there. And remember, not all your uh, shrubs need to be trimmed. Uh, so you might want to check, you know, if you have a neighbor who has some really good landscaping skills, those are the best people to ask those kind of questions to because they're probably familiar with the same plants that are in your yard. So, hey, there it is. Uh, good luck, everybody. And I'll talk to you all very soon.